Okay, so now we're live, and what we're talking about today is what's happening in, I mean, minimize, it's not too much crap, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're, we're talking about uh, RX Spectral Editor, and specifically the version that works as a event editor, something that's working within Logic, Studio One, Pro Tools, and how, uh, how it works. And a question that David Holmes asked was, I'm trying out the ARA Spectral Editor in Logic when I process an editor. It has no effects on the region in Logic itself. I'm obviously missing something obvious. Any help, grateful, whatever. I mean, I don't mean whatever, whatever. I mean, that, on and on. So he asked a, a good question, great question. And it's confusing. I remember, I remember the first time I looked at this months ago during the beta, I'd go, ah, it doesn't, this doesn't make sense to me. Uh, you look at the, the waveform in one view here. And it looks one way, and then you look at the actual what's happening in the spectral editor, and it looks another way. So it just kind of confused me at first. I do remember that whole process. So uh, yeah, if someone's confused, hey, join the fun. I was as well. And obviously, David had a question. So we're normal, I think. I mean, I don't know. He's normal. I may not be. Uh, be sure, of course, to join uh, the uh, RX group that we have, uh, RX Audio Rescue. So be sure to join that. It's in the, the, the links down on the uh, bottom right-hand corner. If you're not in the VOTech Simplified group, be sure to join that as well, where we are always talking about audio related to voiceover stuff. And of course, if you really want to learn how RX works and get a, just a ready-made system so that you don't need to know the details and you can be a performer rather than worried about the tech, then go ahead and get RX Jumpstart. It just it has it laid out. And I've got some new stuff coming in for 11 that will be in here over the next month. but this, all the fundamentals are identical. I've been doing this 10 years now. And just so you know, the, and I'll minimize this, I'm going to show it in uh, Studio One. I'm on my PC. It applies to the same thing to the Mac. Note if you run in Logic, you have to run in Rosetta mode for this to work. If you run in Studio One, it does run native. And that's an Apple issue. Apple is not updated to the latest version of ARA. And when they do, it will be available in native mode as well. So that's something to do with the way Logic is currently wired up. It's not something that has to do with Isotope, so, so we can't complain to Isotope about it. We need to complain to Apple about getting Logic up to the latest version. When they do, then it'll work the same as it does in Pro Tools, the same as it does in Studio One. But essentially, it is an event editor. That means it's a spot cleaner. It's designed that I'm listening to my audio here, and I get to a point, and I hear something, and after I hear something, I want to clean it up. Hey, there's a bump, there's a pop, there's a noise in there. And what happens is when I first did it, I expected that I could add the event editor in here and it would come up and I would be able to modify this and I would instantly see it over here in my audio. These things are linked together. This is not the same as what happens when we do VST and we put an effect on the track. That's a different process, but there is one, one area that is similar. The cool thing about event editors are they're non-destructive. So RX by default is destructive. Um, but in this case, we can render and get a version of this. But by default, watch what happens. I'm going to turn on the gain control, not because that's something that I want to do. 90% of the time, I'm, I'm going to be using spectral repair. Uh, but you should think of this as a non-destructive situation because it is. Watch this. I'm going to take the gain, and I'm going to be dumb or I'm going to be extreme. I'm going to give it 60 dB. Why? I want it to be obnoxious, and I'm really good at obnoxious, okay? I'm way better than average at obnoxious, so you can be obnoxious too. And by the way, it really, really helps if you throw a comment in the chat. I can hear it, I can see it, the mic's working, everything's, I, I'm seeing what's going on. Uh, I've upgraded my interface this last week, so I have everything plumbed in differently. I was gonna do live simultaneous, I've done this, 20, 50 times where I'm simultaneously live on YouTube and on Facebook, but somehow the Facebook connection wasn't working, and I just said, ah, I'll figure that out later, because I couldn't figure it out in near real time. So by the way, if you think, you know, I, I have tech things too, meaning something goes wrong, I laugh about it, figure it out, I'll have that working in another day. But you'll notice that what I did was I just ruined this audio. Now, I'm not going to play that for you because it would blow up your speak, it, depending on how loud you had it. It potentially, if someone was listening louder, they this would be a bad day because I just turned that up by 60 dB. So that's ridiculous. Don't do it. I just wanted you to visually see. Notice, though, in the background, I had chose and put this on this red 
uh, event just so that you could see it and so that we had a common, we could visually see exactly what I'm working on. And in this case, after changing this, there's no change here. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead is do the opposite. Now I'm going to undo that. And here's the interesting thing. And I did that on purpose. When there are, there are a bunch of keys, here's one of the things that people don't understand about the ARA stuff. There's an interaction between the two and it's passing through keyboard shortcuts to the DAW. Full, and, and that at first just like, ah, this doesn't make sense to me, it doesn't make sense to me. So depending on what we're doing, I'm gonna go ahead and add this event editor back in. Now it's there. I'm going to, instead of what I just did before, by the way, I'm back to the beginning because I took out the event editor with an undo, and that's by design, but watch this. We are going to take and do the opposite of what I did before, and that's turn this down by oh, 100 dB. Cool, that's almost silence. Let me just change the, uh, I'm gonna just take this. We're going to blank this out. Don't do this, okay? This is for demonstration purposes only. So we process that. All right, now I have a big hole in the audio. Notice, no big hole in the audio. Notice this, I press space bar. The space bar passes through. I, right, let me make sure you see this. This is the active app right here. And also notice the cursor is actually working the same. If I put the cursor here, there's where that is. So as I'm playing this audio, space bar, the normal stuff I've been doing. Time, but that, so 90% of my. Finish that up and. So what you saw was, as the playback was occurring, I have the same thing I would get if I take one of the more advanced DAWs, Pro Tools, uh, Re Pro Tools, Logic, Studio One, and I put a reverb on it, I would have the exact same effect, meaning reverb, when placed as an event, uh, placed as an effect on a track, you can't see it. It's just, it's applied when played back or when rendered, uh, that sort of thing, you can, and I can render a copy of this. I'll show that in just a second, but here's the important thing. You can think of this like an effect. So if I went and decided, well, you know what I'm going to do? Instead of doing an event, uh, there's no other ways to do this, but I'm going to add an event here and I'm gonna add room reverb, that's fine. And so, what? listen to this, this is really obnoxious. Every time, but not that, so 90% of my... Now, you don't see a change instantly when we put room reverb on something. You don't see a change when you use the spectral editor either. And by the way, you can have uh, you can have presets. So I do have presets here that I could use for different things. But point being, this event here, you see it. I can close this, and even when you close this, it's still silent in that section. Finish that up, and I'll get to the end, and I will do that. And it's not silent in the rest of it. So it's a weird thing at first. But think of it like applying any other effect you would for in a track in a more advanced DAW. So you're in logic. So David was going, well, I expected the display to reflect what I had done in RX, and so did I. But here's the other thing that you can do in all the different DAWs. If I open the inspector, first thing, let me go ahead, and I have a keyboard, uh, a shortcut here, so it comes back up. And so there's my situation. And you can go in. And you can get, and you can do this in all the different DAWs. It's DAW dependent because each DAW handles this a little different, but watch this. I render it, and then now what happens is it ends up, and, the, and what's happening is right in here, my reverb is playing back through, and that's just because I had put all that reverb on there. And so when we listen to this, 90% so of my... And I had used and set up my reverb to be the most obnoxious reverb I could find in terms of having a hyper long delay. Uh, so it's, it's just because I'm doing the demo. Most, we'd, <clears throat> we would never do this. And if I took off the reverb, and I could now, here's the interesting thing. Uh, behind the scenes, my audio is still there. If I found out later, a week later, a month later, I can restore this. I'm back to the original. It still has that event effect on it. We need it has this, and I can go back here, and I can undo it. And if I took off the reverb, then what's going to happen is, let me just bypass, well, I can bypass, I'll just take it off, that's even better. I'm going to uh, remove that. And then if I then render this thing, then it will look more like what you expect. It's totally blank in there. 
I just had two effects going on. So, David, the real question, if you think of it the same way as adding all the other effects that you put on in Iraq and that they're applied at a different time and you can hear them during playback, but they are not something that changes the actual waveform, I could have a control there that just turns something down. I can have automation, all sorts of other tools. You already get that. When I first did it, I expected that if I'm, it would work more like Melodyne can do some things where it changes both displays at once. I thought it would work like that. I remember being surprised the first time I, I did this that, wait, I'm in it. I, it. It looks totally different. And I knew I was adding volume or taking away volume or changing something. I took out some pops and clicks as my initial test months ago. And, and I was saying, this is weird. I was expecting the waveform to change. And then I ended up understanding and talking to developers about, oh, no, 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 no. That's just a different concept. It's the, but it's consistent with what happens with track effects and what happens with event effects or little segments where you take a little segment. And by the way, I had applied that little reverb just to this red section here, not to everything. Okay. So there's a bunch of stuff that you can do with this. It's super cool and it makes life easy. Okay. But it is a different concept than what I expected. So I was confused by that. So if you, uh, if you have a question about that, be sure to ask before we're done with this. I'm going to show a couple other tips and tricks and interesting things that I just didn't know. And last time I knew some of them, I just didn't say anything because there was too much when I did a session on the first looks. But here's a couple other tips and tricks here. So first, of course, you've got undo and redo, and you can undo things different here and go back to the very beginning, yes. And uh, so you can, you can get your stuff back, okay? So you can do all that. So that helps while we're working with things. But here's something that's actually important. I, I, I was frustrated at first. Let me, let me take, a, I'm gonna take another section here. Let me grab another piece of audio. I, I, I'm going to put in the event effect here and add it. And then when it's here, it was like, okay, but this isn't big enough for me to see. And I, I was very unhappy about that at first. It's okay, I can expand the window. But my normal keyboard shortcuts that I use, I use these, Oh, tens of thousands of times. My up arrow key to zoom in on something did not work. And I was bothered by that uh, because I was, well, shoot, I can't even zoom in. So I'm stuck with whatever I zoom, whatever the display is, uh, this, however long this event is, there's nothing I can do. That was my first thought. I was wrong. So what I did instead was found out, hey, roll your mouse wheel and roll, your, and, and you see we zoom in on things. And then we drag, just like we do in RX, we drag the timeline all around. There's some mouth noise right there. I would be using spectral repair on that. I'm gonna go ahead and, and I just changed some, uh, I, I brought, it, brought in a preset. And now when I take spectral repair and I process that, it, you see it just changed that little section there. And I'm gonna zoom in on that so you can see it. So there's the little section that got changed and I'll put that back. But it's, uh, it's, it's doing its job. This is spectral repair. I could have done each of those separately. I just did a big section so you can see it work. And the keyboard shortcut is Control, Enter, or Command, Enter in order to, to, to do the processing there. And you can see that I just processed a bigger section there. And depending on the settings, depending on what you're doing, you can also go in over here and you can zoom in vertically by rolling your mouse wheel here. And a double click brings it back, and a double click brings it back. And by the way, the, the reason I know those keyboard shortcuts, they're identical to what to what's working in RX. So where they could, they use uh, shortcuts that are consistent with what happens in RX. So for all of you that know RX well, real well, then you might have guessed these too. But I just remember the first time I came into this and saying, "Huh." My normal keyboard shortcuts for zooming in and zooming out don't work. And I've used those for almost a decade now. I'll go back to RX3 when it first came out. And uh, so yes, you can zoom in by rolling your mouse wheel here. You can get it back to the original by double clicking on the timeline. You can, you can zoom in vertically by picking a spot and zooming in that way. I mean, one of these nice Logitech MX Master mice that rolls like crazy. And so once I've zoomed in on something because I wanted to see something, a double click gets it back. Same with down here. And that just allows me to pick the spot I want, roll my mouse wheel, 
and now I can see the details there, and now I could use spectral repair, and I can I'm going to do it with the uh, I'm going to do it with the mouse so that you can see me doing it. Normally I'd be using keyboard shortcuts, and what you can see is if I play those back, just like I played that hole in the beginning, it now ended up being um, gone. You, I mean, obviously when I rendered it, you saw it gone, and so it works out really well. Gone. Uh, this tool is amazing, works really well. I have some other things I'm asking them to, to, to do for us. Um, and for those of you who are using Studio One and Pro Tools, um, those versions, it was, I asked them about Studio One, I showed them, and since, since Studio One's one of the ARA founders, uh, they ended up starting that, and when they did that, they realized, hey, we could also do it for Pro Tools, so if you're using Pro Tools, uh, these these were not on their radar when I talked to them originally. Uh, I just made lobby them. I knew what was in Logic. I thought it was super cool. I said, hey, we want these for Studio One. And then when they did it, they realized they could do it for more. And they have others they say that they are probably going to do over my pay grade. They have said they may do some others. And uh, so, yeah, just depends on how this goes. And that's a great tool. I'm going to look to see if there's any comments or questions. I don't see any in there. So let me check on my notes here. Um, Remember, you can by default, it's just like any other effect that you apply in, uh, in the more advanced DAWs. It does not affect the waveform here. It simply instead is when it's playing back, it respects that. It, but it doesn't in real time change the visuals on your audio even and it's not supposed to. okay? Now in the DAWs, you can do you can render those event effects. But that's up to your DAW as to, in, in Studio One, I can render them and see that hole in there. When I put in that really, really big, uh, I brought the gain up 60 dB. If I, were, if I do that in a section here, switch over to the gain tool and bring it up a whole bunch and process that, then when I render that out, um, you will see that it just messes up that. There's, there's the, but now I have the visual that matches what I just did and then if I go ahead and take off the event editor, it's pretty interesting if I say no event editor. Oh, because I rendered that. Sorry, I have to restore that first. Now it's back. And then I take off the event editor if I had one. And then now it's back. It, that hole's gone. There's no change. I have all the original stuff. It's pretty amazing that you can do all that stuff and you can start and kind of round trip the whole thing. You can even close the thing, reopen it, and it still works. So it's pretty cool stuff. All right, I hope you're impressed. And I hope somebody heard all this, and I hope this was helpful. Okay, so cool, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, RX Jumpstart, check that out. Be sure to join the RX group if you're not in it, if you're watching just this just on YouTube. And we have an absolutely killer group, 9,000 people, VO, VO Tech Simplified. Be sure to join that group as well. It's a great group, growing, crazy. Tons of great people, tons of great people contributing. And uh, I don't see any questions, so I'm going to let you go. You guys have a fantastic weekend if you're watching this live. If you're watching it at another time, I hope you don't have a, no, I hope you have a fantastic weekend, whatever weekend it is, whenever you're watching this. There are playlists, subscribe, like, send this out to other people, share it in the groups, share it in RX groups, share it in voiceover groups, share it with anybody that it makes sense to. Really great tech. I'm really happy it came out. And, uh, I'm happy that I, a year ago, talked to the product manager and, and this stuff was developed. So good stuff moving forward. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. See you on the wires. Bye-bye.